Barack Obama. Can you point to a circumstance in the richer daily political machine like Sarah Palin went after Frank Murkowski, a living legend in Alaskan politics who was a U.S. senator, sitting governor. He was corrupt like Ted Stevens, went after him in Alaska and beat him. Did Obama ever go against the Richard Daley political machine in Chicago? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. They own that guy. Daley owns Obama. He complains about how McCain votes with Bush 90% of the time. Obama is with Richard M. Daley 300% of the time. I mean, the guy is absolutely owned lock, stock, and barrel by the political machine in Chicago. And that is, you know, this is a part of his career that I believe has been seriously underexamined. And I try very hard in the case against Barack Obama to explain exactly what a political machine is, how Chicago really works. Senator Obama will endorse anyone, no matter how crooked, any stooge of Mayor Daley, he will put his good name behind. Even when he was a popular U.S. senator with enough political capital to do something about the corruption in Chicago, he didn't because he would be working against his allies. You know, he doesn't work against people that Tony Resco is raising money for that Mayor Daley likes. When bipartisan reformers, liberals and conservatives, came together, to try to end the corruption in Cook County, to, uh, to throw out the Democratic machine boss, John Stroger, he would not get involved. He ended up endorsing John's son when he replaced him on the ballot, calling him a good progressive Democrat, which really upset the liberals in Chicago. See, the thing about Chicago, you have to understand, if you, have, you have a one-party corrupt system in which it's not a question of Republicans and Democrats. It's a question of good government people, reformers, versus the machine people, the corrupt people. And, and Senator Obama will endorse anyone, anyone that Mayor Daley tells him to endorse. He will do anything Mayor Daley tells him to do. This, is, this has been the problem. He shows no independence. He's never stuck out his neck for, quote, change we can believe in. That slogan <laughs> is a wholly imaginary idea in, in, in his political career. It's kind of it's a joke. Never, we, we, never. For, for the last three and a half years, he's been a powerful United States senator from Illinois, specifically Chicago, the Hyde Park section in Chicago. And in the last three and a half years, or the eight years before that, what uh, changes have he brought? Has he brought to the mean streets of South Chicago? Well, I'll tell you what he's done. What he's done is he has passed and co-sponsored legislation to make Tony Resco a millionaire. That's his biggest accomplishment in the city of Chicago. How, how did he do that? That's well, he, there were six different bills that I go into, and, and in fact, I'm, you, you won't read about this anywhere else except in Chapter 11 of the case against Barack Obama. Six bills were that he that he helped push through. They gave special tax credits, special building subsidies, maintenance subsidies, and rent subsidies, uh, exempted people like Resco from local zoning laws in towns in the Chicago land area, and there was even a bill that artificially increased demand for the kind of low-income slums that Resco was building uh, by about seven to 10,000 units. And, you know, Resco isn't the only one. Obama is surrounded by developers. They've funneled hundreds of thousands of dollars into his political uh, campaigns over the years, and Resco alone gave, uh, funneled $250,000 into, uh, into his campaign. This is what he does. He helps his friends in government he, because he's not a reformer. He doesn't stand for change. Yeah, I mean, again, the, I, the most dramatic examples come when he goes ahead and there are reformers running in races, even liberal reformers, and he won't support them. He supports the daily guys. He supports the guys that Resco has raised money for, and that, that's what his career is characterized by. And David Ferdoso, isn't it well known in the city of Chicago because of the Tribune and the Sun-Times? This yeah. is well reported to their benefit. Yeah. In the city, but it's never gotten out. I'm watching tonight CBS's 60 Minutes that did a softball interview with Barack Obama and asked softball questions, never asked anything about Resco, about Wright, never asked anything about giving us some reform ideas you've implemented the past 10 or 12 years in politics, never asked about Michelle Obama getting a $200,000 raise from a Chicago hospital right after yeah. he became a U.S. senator, and then he funneled back to that hospital millions of dollars in earmarks. There was no That's right. questions at all about this. No, nope, no, nope. and, and you know nobody asked him either about the uh, the grants he got for his private law client. Uh, this, uh, there was a man who paid him one hundred twelve thousand uh, uh, dollars for legal work, and then his the, uh, Obama managed to get the guy's corporation a uh, three, you know, and he and Obama and his staff got them three hundred twenty thousand dollars in uh, grants to put on ping pong tournaments. So <laughs> if you invest in Obama, that's, uh, that's a triple return on your investment. David Fredoso, uh 
when I watched uh, intently uh, the uh, speech Thursday night of Barack Obama, uh, I thought about a Britney Spears concert. Uh, I, I, I hearken back to the manipulation of mass crowds at other rallies that I've seen in other countries. And I thought, this guy is particularly manipulative. Did you, Were there two or three things in that speech uh, Thursday night that you found particularly outrageous or hypocritical? I mean, for one thing, you know, when you talk about what your opponent's position is, generally you should at least state it correctly. Um, I don't like the fact that McCain has been a perennial and strong supporter of uh, of increased federal fuel emission regulations, but that's one of the things Obama said that was simply false. He said that he, he's been there for 26 years and he's, you know, he said no to the, I mean, McCain was, that's completely false. McCain, together with John Kerry, uh, proposed one of these uh, bills in 2002 when I was there. I actually interviewed McCain about it at the time, and Obama just simply lied about uh, McCain's record on that issue. I mean, that was that was one of many things. Then he, he also repeated the falsehood that he had uh, thrown people off the welfare rolls in Illinois. <laughs> he opposed welfare reform yeah. in Illinois. I mean, th- th- this is this is just the kind of thing that he's able to get away with these completely counterfactual statements, and no one in the mainstream media is willing to uh, to, to to call him on it. It's 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 quite disturbing, really, when you hear Chris Matthews and, and T- uh, Keith Olbermann practically having a, a I don't know what you want to call it Obama Rama or Obama whatever you want to say. Well, they, they're um, basically self satisfying themselves whenever they see his face. And Matthews admitted he is tingling up and down his legs. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even want to think about that. It's a little too gross. Yeah, to I, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, the, the really, he has so many cheerleaders in the mainstream media. Nobody wants to talk about, you know, how at the beginning of the, like you were saying, the beginning of the audacity of hope, he basically gives a fictional false account of his first election about how he, he gave this speech about people coming together for the common good and setting aside their selfish interests, and he was elected because of that, when in fact, yes, he threw all of his opponents off the ballot by challenging their <laughs> petition signatures and ran on the post. This is, you know, this is the other thing about Senator Obama related to that, is that he's never actually been in a tough, close election before. He lost an election when he ran for Congress in 2000, but he knew he was going to get killed yeah, from but, the beginning. But, yeah, Bobby Rush was going to beat him in that thing, the congressman. And he knew it. So, And in all of his other elections, either he threw all his opponents off the ballot, which he's not going to be able to do this time, or he, uh, or he didn't really have a real race. And so the, the, this is the first serious contested election. Obama has ever has ever had in his career, and if it's like the primaries, he might fade as it gets to the late stages. That's what we're hoping. With David Fredoso, we have to run. The name of the book is "The Case Against Barack Obama." And if you want uh, written verse, if you want fact after fact after fact of the real Barack Obama, that sixty minutes tonight won't tell you. You got to read the book, "The Case Against Barack Obama," because it's all right there for people to see. How's the book doing, by the way? It's doing great. We're uh, I'm, I uh, debuted at number five on the New York Times bestseller list. I'm uh, number six this week, but next week we're going up. We're going to go up. That's a, that's uh, uh, I people need to know the truth about Senator Obama. I'm trying. I'll talk to anyone who anyone who will listen about what the real Obama is all about. Well, David Ferdoso, you are truly a great American. Oh, thank you, Bill. You too. God bless you and good luck in Minnesota. All right, take care. Thanks.